Some tales are told, then soon forgotten. But a legend is forever. This is Sean with Strange Land Oddities. We are here with R.A. Mihailov. How are you doing today, man? Sean, I'm doing fantastic. How about you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Now, you started off in professional wrestling. Well, no, no, I didn't. No? No, I started out acting. You started out acting? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, I used to have really long hair and a, a big beard, and uh, I, I bleached my hair, you know, one time just for the, can I say fuck of it? Yeah. Just for the fuck of it. Uh, and, you know, because people... Oh, you know, I'd be like uh, walking down Hollywood Boulevard and people would go, Hey, Jesse! You know, Jesse Body Ventura and stuff like that. And I always, you know, people always thought I was a wrestler, so I said, what the fuck, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll train as a wrestler. I went to wrestling school. I went to the same wrestling school as John Cena oh, at, wow. the, at the same time. Uh, he was a few rotations ahead of me, so I never really got in a ring with him. Uh, and remember, he wasn't... John Cena then either you know right uh, but uh, but that was many years later I was I was 45 years old before I, I, I even uh, hit, hit the wrestling ring I thought about it for many years and was approached about it for uh, many times but uh, yeah so you just said you know I'm just gonna stick with acting and that's it yeah yeah I mean you know quite frankly uh, the fact is I, I I hit the wrestling way too late you know if, I mean, I'm the same age as Jesse Ventura, Hulk Hogan, uh, um, um, Jake the Snake, you know, we're all pretty much the same age. And some of those guys are still taking bumps, but they started when they were young, you know. Right. Or when, when you're 45 years old and you try to break in a business that's a, a you know, a super athletic business like that, you're way behind, you know. Uh, if I, you know, if I'd started when those guys did, I could probably still do it. but. Right. I realized I would never have a substantial career because of how late I started. Gotcha. Now, in uh, the 80s, you were in License to Drive with both of the Corys. Yes. Uh, and then two years later, you get the role of Leatherface. Is that what it was? Is that, yeah. Two years. Okay. Yep. Uh, what made you decide to say, hey, let, you know, let, let Leatherface is my role. I want to do this. Oh, well, I'll tell you, uh, Sean Wright, uh, I set my cap. For Hollywood, I went out there specifically to be a movie star, uh, or at least a well-known character actor, you know. Uh, I was a lifelong fan of horror, and I mean, I would, uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to know how to, how to play the, uh, the Wolfman and how to play the Frankenstein monster. You know, I'd read that famous Monsters of Film, and I'd go, damn, that would be so cool. Uh, then when I grew up and found out, you know, that acting could be a business, or uh, you know a profession then I wanted to be a movie star you know so my childhood fantasy of becoming a movie monster and my adult ambition of being a movie star uh, all came together when I got cast as Leatherface did I specifically go out for that part no the part came to me uh, you know as an actor especially as an unknown actor you have no control over your career you can't pick and choose you know, oh, I want to be, you know, so uh, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be in this movie. Nah, you just uh, take the parts as they come. I had a, a, a leg up uh, with the fact that I knew Jeff Burr, the director. Right. And, you know, and the truth is, he actually offered the part to Gunnar Hansen mm. because he has great reverence for our business and the horror, uh, history of horror. So, you know, that was proper for him to do that. Unfortunately, Gunner could not make a deal with New Line Cinema. It left the part open. Jeff and I have many, many mutual friends, and they were all at a Fourth of July party. I was not there because I was hung over from the night before. Uh, <laughs> but they were all standing around the bar, and the talk, you know, came, you know, a bunch of film geeks and stuff like that, writers, directors, act, other actors. Hey, Jeff, you're doing that new Chainsaw movie. Who are you going to get for Leatherface? And it was like, it, I was like the, natu the natural choice. Once Gunner uh, passed, uh, uh, passed on the project, I was the absolute most natural choice among our group of friends. So that's how it happened. 
Nice. Now, were you offered any other roles in the, the other upcoming uh, after Texas? Be listen to this. Get ready for this. It's not oh, an exclusive. Yeah, it's not an exclusive. But hang on to your hat. I was actually in contention for Jason in uh, number six. Oh wow. They had listen to okay. Listen to this. They had hired uh, uh, somebody to play Jason. They shot it, uh, you know, in Atlanta. Uh, they weren't happy with what he was doing. I won't say the man's name, but I will tell you this. He's now one of the top stunt coordinators in the business. I mean, one of the top doing huge, huge movies as a stunt coordinator. But for some reason, they didn't like what he brought to the role of Jason. So, uh, Jim Winburn, I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah. Yes, Jim Winburn is a very good friend of mine. He called me up one day and said, hey, all right, a friend of mine's producing a, a, a movie called Friday the 13th, number six, and I told him about you. For, they want to see you for the part of Jason. So I got summoned to Paramount Lot with a drive-on pass into uh, Frank Mancuso Jr.'s Hollywood bungalow, sitting like this, just about like we are right now, talking about how I would do Jason. You know, or, or uh, and uh, I guess I made enough of an impression because he passed me on to the to the director and the stunt coordinator. Uh, um, so I had I went on and had my meeting with the with the director and the stunt coordinator. The stunt coordinator and I hit it off very well. Uh, you know, I didn't. I, I don't wait. I don't even know if I met the director. I met the stunt coordinator. A long story short, they hired some other guy. Because I, I, I stayed in contact with the stunt coordinator because we, you know, hit it off. And uh, it was C.J. Graham. Right. And I didn't, I didn't know who got it. Nobody ever told me, nothing like that. So when, when the movie came out, I read the reviews. And this guy that beat me out for the part of the Jason, C.J. Graham. Oh, son of a bitch not only beat me out for the part, but he's also using initials like me, bastard. So I, oh, I was, I was fuming. I was furious, man. You know. So, f flash forward. I don't know how many years, right? I, I've now I've done Chainsaw Three. Uh, you know, I'm in the gym training, and this other big guy comes in. You know, we both ride motorcycles. He's got long hair. He's a big guy, big, good lifter and stuff like that. Hey, bro. Yeah, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. How you doing? Yeah, I saw you pushing that weight. Yeah, look, you're looking good, brother. Never change names or nothing, right? You know, it's just, just you know, like you, you do at the gym. Anyway, one day I'm in there training and I hear somebody say, hey, CJ. <laughs> and I stopped cold in my tracks and I threw my shit down and I walked over. What did you say? <laughs> I said, is your name CJ Graham? He goes, yeah, why? I said, I've hated your guts for years. <laughs> and, and, then I and then I told him, you know, that he'd beat me out for the part of Jason and, but I, you know, uh, <laughs> So and now we're good friends. I was just hanging out with him uh, uh, in Arizona over the summer. Nice. Yeah, I'm supposed to be interviewing him at uh, Days of the Dead in uh, Charlotte. No, oh, there you go. Well. well, there you go. Um, now, you were also uh, in some other movies like Smothered and Hatchet with Kane Hodder. Yep. Um, what, were, what were your favorite, you know, some of your favorite scenes to do with Kane? What? <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Kane and I have so much fun hanging out, you know. Uh, we've done, oh, I don't know, maybe like five or six movies together. Uh, we do a lot of conventions together. And we're both practical jokers. Uh, we're, on, we're sort of on the same wavelength, you know. Yeah, and, Kane, Kane was telling me about his ass spray that he does. Just his what? His, his ass spray that he sprays on Oh, people. yeah, that son of a bitch, yeah. <laughs> He's got yeah, the ass spray and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So we're, we're always playing practical jokes on each other, always trying to one-up the other one in some, you know, uh, we, we, we were at one con and uh, Kane said something to this girl and told her to come over and tell me and it was something really vile. I can't remember what it was. And I, I said, okay, all right. And I said, come here. And, you know, I whispered in her ear and told her to go over and we kept, <laughs> we kept passing her back and forth with these vile, vile uh you know comments and it, it was hilarious we just have we just have a lot of fun <laughs> nice now um on your spare time i see that you have a paranormal group called the hollywood ghost hunters yes that's with kane uh and kane's good friend my good friend too but uh, kane knew him first uh rick mccollum okay yeah 
Uh, the three of us are the, the core members of the group. Adam Green, Director Adam Green, is a, a, an outlier member. Uh, uh, Danielle Harris is an outlier member. Uh, you know, but but Kane, uh, 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 Rick, and I are the the core members. Nice. So, how often do you guys do that? Oh, not as often as we should or want to. You know, we've we've been angling for our own show for many uh, for many years. Actually, it's been quite a few years. Uh, but no one uh, has picked it up. We shot a, you know, we we, we signed with a development company. They shot a uh, a demo reel, shopped it around, and nobody jumped on it. I don't get it. Hmm. Yeah, tell me about it. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. What's going on? Yeah, come on. What's going on, people? Come on, Hollywood Ghost Hunters. Kane Hodder, R.A. Mihailov, Rick McCullum. It's a win, 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 win. 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 <laughs> now, tell us about Death House, which just came out. Well, yes, I guess we're going to have a little uh, panel on it this evening here at Mad Monster in Charlotte, North Carolina, February 16th through the 18th. Uh, well, I can tell you what I know about it from the one day I worked on it. <laughs> uh, let me see, who was I in the scene with? Oh, well, Kane Hodder. How about that? Uh, uh, from what I know, from what I've read, from what I've seen and what I've been told, it's a pretty cool movie. It was, the idea was conceived by Gunner, you know. Uh, unfortunately, Gunner didn't live long enough to see it come to fruition, you know, which is pretty sad. Right. But at least his legacy will live on through this movie. Uh, it's basically a who's who of horror. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, Kane Hodder, uh, Tony Todd, Sid, Sid Haig. Haig. You tell me. You know more about it than I do. Uh, uh, you know, every, just about everybody, man. So. So after this convention, what are your other plans to do? I know you have a, another convention that I'm going to be attending to. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Um, do you have any other movies in the works? Uh, nothing locked down at this moment. You know, and I, I, I'm superstitious until the 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 T's are dotted and the I's are crossed. I don't want to say anything. You know, there's always there's always iron, there's always irons percolating in the fire. You know what I mean? But nothing has been locked down. When I leave here, I'm going to Dalton, Georgia, to uh, meet with uh, the executive producer of a movie I did in September called uh, Ride Hard, Live Free. It's a post-apocalyptic biker movie. I don't know why I got I don't know why I got cast in it. it, it, it I, I don't know. You probably just have the biker look. It, well, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. But uh, it, it's pretty cool. It's, the executive producer is a founding member of a motorcycle club. We used uh, real uh, outlaw motorcycle clubs in the movie. So it was, it's pretty cool. Actually, for me, it was a dream job. I got to go to the desert and ride Harleys, checking the plus column. Got to hang out with outlaw motorcyclists, check in the plus <laughs> column. And got to shoot guns, check in the plus column. Got to menace teenage girls and not go to jail, check in the plus <laughs> column. So it was a win-win-win for me. Nice. All right, everybody. Well, this is R.A. Mihailov. Uh, again, this is uh, Mad Monster Party. We're in North Carolina, February 16th through 18th. Best known as Leatherface, but he has other movies. Check them out. Check them out. Check them out. Any last words for your fans? Thank you for your interest in my career. I hope to uh, add more to it for your viewing pleasure. Strange Land Audios is out.